Hello everyone! Today we're taking a look at Rad Raygun, a game that was released for Xblig just a few days ago. However, before we actually start the game, let's take a look at the intro cutscene, so we can get a, more of an idea of the story behind Rad Raygun. And now that we know who Rad Raygun is and how he came to be, let's start the game. We now know why Rad fights, because in the year 1980X, we are fighting the robot communists. In the ultimate conflict between organics and mechanicals. The conflict between ideologies and uh, financial systems coming to a head. As our cyborg that was created by the ingenuity of capitalist science must now face the all synthetic communists. But we can't worry about this right now. The White House is under attack by the communist robots. And here we are, we're rad. And here we have to learn how to use our abomination of a cyborg body. We can double jump, we can shoot. As we try not to think about the nature of what we actually are now, no longer human. What does it even mean? What does humanity even mean now to Rad Raygun? His dreams of, of marrying, getting a wife, starting a family, all those are gone. What dreams does Rad have now besides destroying communist robots and ensuring the domination of capitalism? Okay, we can slide. We can use that to get around faster. We could see the war going on, out on outside between the Secret Service and the Communist robots. Even though we can move faster, it, whoop, it doesn't seem like it really matters, does it? Rat has all the time in the world. He'll never die of old age, because he's some sort of cyborg now. And why is a human being on the side of the robots? Well, he must die, obviously, because he's a traitor, not only to his race, but to his country and to his, his financial systems. You knew Rad had to kill that guy, because he looks at him and knows that that soldier will never appreciate what he truly has, what it means to be a human being. Because Rad now knows, or Gumpy, I should say. Well, that was his old name. That was his human name. Gumpy doesn't exist anymore. Only Rad. And he knows he'll never get back what he lost. It's a little known secret. That's what his gun is powered with, by the way. Uh, sadness and regret.
want to get in there, because there's stuff in there. But it looks like Rad cannot actually slide on midair. I guess that's lost to me. I like to think that the, the music we're hearing right now is just going on in Rad's head. This just automatically starts playing to let Rad know it's time to jump into combat. We have some options that we can take a look at, such as the bestiary, in which it tells us about the, uh, the communist robots that we've been destroying and why they deserve to die. No, that's goo, not god. I thought it said god for a second and thought that this game might be, uh, might get, might get pretty interesting. If god's a communist. A robot communist, that is. See, no one likes Shotgunner. Not even his own forces, not even him. Nothing there. Oh, Sputnik's one of the enemies. I look forward to that. Oh yeah, that's right. There was one other option here. As we can see, the game is trying to... Whoop. The game is trying to evoke the look of the Game Boy. For some reason, I'm not sure why why that particular system, but we can uh, also evoke memories of the Super Game Boy in that we can change the tint of the screen. And I figure that since the creators of the Cyborg robot body were uh, Gumpy and Yokoi, it only makes sense that we tint the screen all red. There we go. Hold on, I can't actually look at that. That's actually really difficult to look at. Uh, let's, let's, let's just change that back. Well, I mean, if we wanted to make it true to the original Game Boy, we probably want to... ...make it look something... yeah, kind of like that? That's more Game Boy-ish, I think. Paintings in the background of the founding of the country. Rad Raygun looks at them wistfully. I mean, is he even an American citizen anymore? Or is... Actually, no. He, was he American? I mean, I don't know. that he's, His name was Ryu Gumpy. So he could be American, but I don't think they established whether or not that the robot work was... If that was being outsourced, contracted to the Japanese, or were they Japanese-Americans? Hard to say. But we can dash backwards. Rad can do that. We can also do this, now that, now that we have that, which is kind of neat. But regardless of what country Rad may be a citizen of, is he actually a citizen anymore, or is he someone's property? Is, does he even have personhood anymore? These are the questions that Rad Raygun evokes. It says deaths this way. And they were right. That led to death. I don't know why that's there. Maybe there's some way of jumping over those spikes, but I, I don't know if there is. Let's pay attention to the signs. Or maybe, uh, maybe, um, maybe those signs in the spike field is there. Maybe that's just being true to the actual design of the White House. So maybe that doesn't actually uh, affect gameplay. Mm-hmm. Never has the the conflict between capitalism and communism been, so, been stated so eloquently as Rad Raygun. It, it really shines a new perspective on the questions that you must have when, when thinking about the Cold War, when thinking about Soviet Russia. And of course the question of 
organics versus versus synthetics. What answers might Rad Raygun have if you make it to the end of the game? In any case, we're fighting one of the, I guess you might call them, uh, communist robot masters here. She sort of, uh, is the boss, you might say, of a stage, a theme stage, this, this case being the White House. And we have to face her, and I don't know if we get, uh, any kind of weapon from beating her. I mean, I imagine that Rad would not actually want to put any, any communist technology into his body. Yeah, he is a rad dude. And he's all capitalist. That's one important mission. All that in one mission? You figure those would be separated into into multiple missions. Yeah, that's that's basically what the map looked like uh, when I went to school. You looked at them and you know, you looked at anywhere else but America on the map, and it, it looked like that, right? Yeah. Alright, Rad, uh, Rad Raygun, I think... Mm hmm I think this is only, like, five levels, so I'm just gonna stop here. Uh, what I would say is, uh, well, first of all, how many of you guessed that this game is mainly inspired by Mega Man? I know, it's hard to tell. Uh, you probably were not able to figure that out. Um, but yeah, as hard as it may be to believe, uh, this game, in many of its ways, is similar to Mega Man. It doesn't control as good, which is really the main and only complaint I have of the game, is that the controls don't feel so great, uh, and don't really feel anywhere as good as the NES Mega Man games did, and if, if that could be fixed, this would be a lot better. The controls aren't bad, but that really is the main thing I noticed from playing this. Uh, I really like the graphics, I really like the sound, I'm very impressed with the music. Uh, it's really quite excellent for Explic standards. Um, so I'm... I'm thinking about playing the rest of this, because I like it a lot. Um, and I, well, I like it a lot, and maybe not a lot, because, like I said, the controls could have used a lot of improvement. But it's, it's good for x -Blig. It's worth playing, I think. Uh, so that's Rad Raygun, and if you're looking for some sort of 2D side-scrolling retro-themed shooter platformer on x this is this has got you covered. You should play this, probably.